Good day. My name is Craig Rollins. I'm an innovation leader and senior toxicologist with Underwriters Laboratories Product Supply Chain Intelligence Division. I want to talk to you today about some software that we've created called Cheminformatics Suite. We have a module called Reach Across, which is what I'll be focusing on this morning. The design of our software involves a machine learning algorithm in order to take advantage of the extensive increase in publicly available toxicology, biology, and physicochemical and structural data. The models that we have are trained on GHS classification hazards, sometimes called H codes. So our models predict GHS classifications, and currently we have models for eight different endpoints, acute oral, acute dermal toxicity, skin and eye irritation, skin sensitization, mutagenicity, and acute and chronic aquatic toxicity. In the near future, we're going to be adding acute inhalation toxicity endpoint, which should be coming in the fall of 2018 at the end of September. Our models use an algorithm which we call Read Across Structure Activity Relationship, or RAZOR. This is a data fusion model, and I'll talk a little bit more about that as we progress. What RAZOR does is it identifies the most similar chemical to the target chemical based on structures, hazards, and physical chemical properties. So we consider an extensive amount of information per chemical to make predictions. Our models are not limited to similarity searches only for toxicophores or substructures with known toxic mechanisms. It considers the whole chemical structure. Our database is built from an extensive amount of toxicity data and hazard data, which we pull from the ECHA classification and labeling database, the US PubChem database, as well as the National Toxicology Program. Our database has over 250,000 chemicals with 300,000 endpoint labels. There are also 70 million chemical structures that we use to build our models. GHS classifications, of course, are, are based on a weight of evidence analysis. So multiple types of data sources are involved in, de in, in determining a GHS classification. But for most of the endpoints we're looking at, we're looking at an extensive amount of animal data that was used to base those GHS classifications on. If we have discordance of a chemical label, so if a chemical has more than one GHS classification for the same endpoint, we handle this by selecting the most hazardous value. This might be called a precautionary principle or a conservative approach. But we believe that that's the right way to do this because we want to make sure that we don't misclassify a chemical if there's a potential for toxicity. Our cheminformatics suite will involve three different modules. Our first module will be for registrations, and we're going to talk about that today. We're also building a model for hazard communications, so for those who want to use predictions of GHS classifications for, for uses such as SDS sheets or MSDS sheets or hazard labeling for Department of Transportation or Transportation Manifestos and, or, or product labels and so forth, the predictions can be used for those purposes. And our most uh, uh, newest module is what we're calling our green chemistry or R&D module. We're providing the information that chemical R&D uh, developers can use to design less hazardous molecules. Today, we're going to focus on our reach across module, which is designed to provide the information needed for registrations, especially for ECHO reach registrations. But again, those classification predictions can be used for any purpose uh, or application where classification data is needed. The way the models work, again, we call read across structure activity relationship or RAZOR, is that we're looking at chemical similarities or analog identification or nearest neighbors. So, for example, there are two chemicals on the screen here. We are methacrylates, an isobutyl methacrylate and a butyl methacrylate. Now, these are very similar looking chemicals, but the computer has to use an algorithm when we've chosen based on assessment of multiple ways of looking at chemical similarities. We just uh, decided to use the Tanamoto heuristic, or sometimes called Jacquard. And what this does is it looks for how many substructures in the chemical are the same across two chemicals and divides it by the total number of substructures in the chemical. And based on the heuristic uh, for Tanamoto, these two chemicals would be determined to be 90% similar. And I think most would agree those chemicals are very similar, and 90% is probably pretty accurate. And that's the fundamental basis how we look at chemical structural similarities. That information is used to build networks of chemicals, and these networks then 
uh, are, are very extensive to the point where we can identify very closely related chemicals based on those structural similarities and other features as well now with our new models that I'll talk about. The idea here is simply to identify the chemical that's most similar that is positive for a particular feature or hazard and identify the similarity to the closest negative chemical or chemical feature. For the reach across model, we use something a little more advanced called data fusion read across structure activity relationship or, or RAZOR. So again, if we just look at the simple aspect of, of looking for the nearest neighbors, we have a chemical, for example, we want to know the Q toxicity. We would identify in our, our networks the closest related chemical that is positive for that feature, the closest related chemical that is negative for that feature, and make a determination on whether or not those chemicals, the chemical heart chemicals hazardous or not. But because chemicals have multiple uh, uh, pieces of information and additional information about both additional hazard as well as additional physical chemical characteristics, we've taken advantage of that to build more advanced models so that we can consider these other features as well. Our models currently consider over 19 different categories of target features when making a prediction. So there's a tremendous amount of information that goes into predicting the, the hazard classification of those chemicals beyond simply the chemical structure and the hazard of concern. It also considers other features such as the acidity or oxidation state or its flammability, as well as all the other types of hazard information available for acute and chronic toxicities. To use the software, one only has to go to www.ulreachacross.com. This is a web-based software package. It's easy to use. It's designed to be a very simple process for accessing the software, registering the software, and then using it for eight different endpoints. So once you access the software through this, this web page, one would then simply create an account, uh, simply click on the Create Account button, the information will be asked for, and uh, the process would be, uh, once completed, will allow one to then uh, start using the software by taking you to a page where the information you need to make a prediction is asked for. For example, here I'm looking at a chemical of potassium bromate. What's needed is a SMILES code. You can use the CAS number as well, and our software uh, does allow the CAS number to be entered in, in, uh, is, except, uh, in addition to the SMILES code. However, it's really best to enter the SMILES code because sometimes CAS numbers cannot be that, uh, are not necessarily accurate. So the SMILES code is entered. One simply selects one of eight different endpoints that can be uh, predicted. You can select all eight with a simple button uh, at the top there. You click it and you automatically select all eight or select independently which models uh, one wants to predict for. Once that's done, you simply enter the save and next button and the model begins to make the predictions. It takes three to five minutes to make each one of those predictions. It does it at the same time. So three to five minutes, you'll have most of the endpoints if you select all eight and you'll have reports sent back in a PDF format for the prediction and additional information, in this case for our REACH Euclid dossier formatted. Useful information for all applications includes an analog table, and this is the top five analogs in the models that were used to make predictions and from our database that are hazardous, so the closest related hazardous molecules are shown, as well as the top five non-hazardous molecules that are shown. And so one can get a visual inspection of this to build some confidence that the similarity of the molecules are, are sufficiently similar that uh, good useful predictions can be made if that's a concern for, for the user. More importantly, we find that this information is very useful for those who are designing new molecules, identify features of a molecule that may be driving the toxicity of concern. The model then provides a probabilistic prediction of the classification. For example, here we're looking at eye irritation, and for this molecule there was a 61% probability that this molecule would be an eye irritant. In our software, we consider this a positive for eye irritation. In addition to that, our model provides something rather unique, and that is we make a probability prediction of the specific GHS categories. And for this example, we see that there's a 41% chance from the 61%, we're actually breaking down the 61% into different lower probabilities. And so there's a 41% chance of the 61% that this is an eye irritation too, or an H319. And so a specific category, GHS category, can be applied to this molecule if that's needed for registration, but also the user can understand that this isn't an eye corrosive concern, this is really an eye irritation concern. 
Every model provides this information, an analog table, a probabilistic prediction of the classification, what we call a binary prediction, and then a probability prediction of the category. Sometimes we call that a potency prediction. In the fall, we're updating the software on several levels. Uh, we'll be adding a, a new endpoint, which will be in addition to our eight endpoints, we're adding acute toxicity simulation endpoint. This table I'm gonna show you is the internal validation statistics. This was just published <clears throat> uh, recently, actually yesterday, July the 11th uh, in, in toxicological sciences. So this information is all available in an open access journal article and I'll show you the reference in a moment. <clears throat> so what we're seeing with all of our models is we have a very large number of chemicals that we use to build each one of these endpoints, thousands of chemicals uh, with, with these uh, hundreds of thousands of data H codes. Our coverage for our models is completely covering that whole uh, database of chemistry for each one of those endpoints. So a very large domain of applicability for each one of these endpoints. For, for acute toxic inhalation, we have 11,369 chemicals that are classified. Uh, as either being acute inhalation toxicants of some category or not. Um, from that, we're, we're, we've uh, calculated that we're getting 90% true positive accuracy from those predictions and 91% true negative predictions for the accuracy uh, of acute inhalation toxicity. What you can see for all of our models though, is that we have very high uh, uh, accuracy when it comes to the true positive and true negatives for each one of those endpoints. Um, and this re is really due to the fact that we're using this data fusion uh, razor algorithm. It's a machine learning random forest algorithm that allows multiple sources of information to be considered at the same time for making these predictions. From that, we're getting balanced accuracies of 90% of and higher for most models for the inhalation toxicity and 90% balanced accuracy. For most models, it's over 90%. What's really remarkable, we've also included an assessment in this publication about our models from, from toxicological sciences, we did a comparison to the existing animal studies where we see reproducibilities for most of the endpoints we could calculate that for of anywhere from 88 <clears throat> or actually 78 uh, percent for, for skin irritation up to 94 percent for acute oral toxicity. And we, uh, we see that our models are achieving the same levels of actually as the re animal study reproducibility is. And in some cases, we're actually exceeding the level of reproducibility of animal studies. So our models are very accurate and very consistent for results that one would expect from animal studies themselves. We publish all this work in multiple publications. Our most recent publication describing in detail our current model and our new model we're rolling out in the fall of September. That includes the inhalation tox prediction model uh, was published in Toxicological Sciences July the 11th of this year. So to access the software, you go to ulreachacross.com, um, and in the fall, we'll have a new interface, a new website for this, which will be the psi.ul.com slash en. You can access the software there, all the new models, a new interface, and all the information I just went through will be available as well. So thank you, and I look forward to seeing you use our software.